Hey friends, Ash here with Gensense with another week in fragrance. There have been a lot of new announcements made as far as fragrances that are going to be coming out here in the very near future over the past week or week and a half or so. And in this video, I'm going to go over those fragrances with you guys today and let you know what to expect to hit your shelves in the near future or the shelves of the stores near you and online. A couple of these fragrances have actually already been popping up on Instagram. So some people are already getting their hands on these. And uh, one of them I know has already been reviewed on YouTube. We've got fragrances to go over today from Ferragamo, Tom Ford, Paco Rabanne, and more. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Up first is a fragrance from Abercrombie & Fitch. It's a new flanker to this one, Abercrombie and Fitch Authentic, and this fragrance is called Abercrombie and Fitch Authentic Night. And in actuality, I know nothing about this fragrance. All I have is this picture of the bottle. So who knows how it's actually going to smell? I don't have any of the notes. There's going to be a men's version and a women's version. I looked around online. I tried to do a bunch of different searches. I checked some of the websites. Uh, that I would typically go to, including European websites, and there's really nothing about this right now, other than that picture. So, not a whole lot to go off of here, just wanted to let you guys know that Authentic Night is going to be coming out in the near future for anybody that was maybe a huge fan of this one. And if I get more information about that in the near future, I'll include that on the next this week in fragrance video. Next up is the fragrance that I'm personally most interested about that's going to be coming out here very shortly. And that's this one, Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum Boise. So this is the newest flanker in the Gentleman line. And Gentleman Eau de Parfum is a fragrance that I think is fantastic. One of my favorite winter fragrances at the moment. One of my favorite cool weather fragrances in general. And then uh, Gentleman Cologne is another fragrance that I think is quite nice as well. I've got a big read up on this one. Shout outs to Fragrantica for that. The Gentleman Collection by the House of Givenchy now introduces its fifth edition. It favors the elegancy and sensuality of a woodsy composition. The first Gentleman was presented in 1974, while its modern re-edition arrived in 2017, followed with the flankers Gentleman Eau de Parfum in 2018 and Gentleman Cologne in 2019, which are the ones that I just mentioned. Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum Boise showcases Gentleman's new face by blending spices, woodsy notes, and fine nuances of powdery and gourmand hues that reflect gentleness and refined elegance. The spicy opening plays with contrasts of black pepper, coriander, and geranium, while the heart is dominated by the refined elegancy of iris, combined with cedarwood and warm and pleasant aromas of cocoa. The woodsy signature comes from the combination of sandalwood, patchouli, and burning woods that create the base of the fragrance. So that was a mouthful, but that's your typical write-up from a fragrance house letting you know how amazing the fragrance is going to be. Sometimes they stretch the truth a little bit. So in case you missed it and all of that jibber jabber about the fragrance, it's got top notes of black pepper, coriander, and geranium, a mid of iris, cedarwood, and cacao, and a base of sandalwood patchouli and burning wood. Obviously, the burning wood note jumps out and grabs my attention. I love fragrances that get across that feeling of smoke or of something that has been burned. A City on Fire, for example, is a fragrance that I'm in love with, even though some people will say it smells like bacon. The Gentleman line of fragrances is, in my opinion, a very high quality line of fragrances, at least when you take into account the Eau de Parfum and the cologne. So I have very, very high hopes about this one. And as I said, this is the one that I'm looking forward to the most out of all these fragrances I'm going to talk to you about today. It's got a good amount of woods in here. That burning wood, as I said, very attention grabbing for me. Personally, it carries over the iris from the Eau de Parfum and you've got a bit of spice in here as well. Very interested in this. Next up from Paco Rabanne, Invictus Onyx. Now, I'm gonna read to you guys the note breakdown, and uh, you really should not get very excited about this. If you know why, then you already know, and if you don't know, I'm gonna tell you in just a couple seconds. It has top notes of grapefruit, sea notes, and mandarin orange, 
a mid of bay leaf and jasmine, and a base of guyac wood, moss, patchouli, and ambergris. So yeah, Invictus Onyx, another Invictus flanker, and it's got this interesting different bottle, but it's actually not a flanker at all. It's just a limited edition bottle of the original Invictus. So yeah, Invictus Onyx is just Invictus put into a different bottle. When I first saw this bottle, before I knew anything about it, before I knew about the note breakdown, before I knew it was just a limited edition bottle, I was like, wow, that looks like maybe they're gonna take Invictus in a different direction, a darker direction, instead of the uh, bubblegummy sweetness that you've come to expect from the Invictus line. But then, no, that's not what it is at all. It's just a cash grab. So. Invictus Onyx. It's Invictus in a cooler bottle. Well, cooler depending on who you ask. Some people are going to say that it's a terrible bottle design, but yeah, bit of a letdown uh, once I figured out it's just a limited edition, but that's what Invictus Onyx is if you see that anywhere. Next up, from Salvatore Ferragamo, Ferragamo, their new men's release. And there was a review done on this fragrance by Red Alessence. So there's already a review out on this fragrance, though it is brand new. So if you're interested in that one in more depth, you can check that review out. From what I've read online and seen online, this is a fragrance that's being marketed toward younger people. And it falls in line with your typical blue fragrances out there. Now I haven't smelled it, so I can't tell you whether I think, oh, it's super generic or hey, maybe this is something that's a little bit new or interesting. Hopefully I'll get my nose on this one soon. In the meantime though, here's a write up from the house, Ferragamo. The Salvatore Ferragamo Fashion House has announced a new men's fragrance named Ferragamo, which expresses the confident and courageous soul of a modern man who journeys through life with passion and inevitable sophistication. Again, from the house. Who do you want to be? Elevating the house's timeless codes with a sharp contemporary twist. This blend is conceived for a free thinker that follows his instinct and rules while embracing every new challenge with no hesitation. His restless spirit leads him to look at things from different angles with unstoppable creativity and boundless curiosity. As he lives in constant motion through dynamic connections and emotional experiences, becoming aware of who he wants to be, he always leaves a lasting impact wherever he goes. Now that is a write-up. Ferragamo fragrance is the ultimate expression, the very essence of this strength and sentiment which resonates through a rich sequence of contrasting yet harmonious elements poised between gentle masculinity and unrestrained attitude. Hey man, that's Ferragamo. A radiant explosion of Mediterranean citrus featuring vibrant bergamot and lemon paves the way to an unexpected heart combining floral yet metallic violet accords and violet leaf absolute with the strength of the unique Ferragamo leather note in a blend that immediately evokes Salvatore Ferragamo's artisanal heritage. Warm notes of musk and vetiver complete the juice, heightening the sensual dimension of the olfactory composition. Oh, that was a mouthful. So this one has a top of bergamot, lemon, and sage, a mid of violet leaf, leather, and cedar, and a base of oak moss, vetiver, and musk. As I said, Steven at Red Alessence has a review for this out already. If you want more information, feel free to check that one out. As I said before, from what I've read, this is marketed toward younger people and is a blue style of fragrance, so should be very versatile and mass appealing. Now, in 2019, there were a number of blue fragrances released. Some of them were not too bad and others were fairly terrible. I'll try to get my nose on this soon and let you guys know on which side of the aisle this one falls. Next up, let's talk about Tom Ford Beau de Jour. Now, obviously, Beau de Jour already exists in the private blend line of fragrances of Tom Ford, so it's not really new, but it is being released or has been released in the signature line. Now this is something Tom Ford has started to do here recently. Ombre Leather 16 was popular, people really liked that, and then they took it and re-released it in the signature line at a more affordable price, and now they've done that with Beau de Jour. Essentially what it looks like is Tom Ford is releasing all these private blend fragrances, and then if one of them really, you know, strikes a chord and is very popular with a lot of people, they take it, release it as a signature line fragrance at a more affordable price. That way, even more people can get their hands on it. More sales. From Tom Ford, the fragrance for the perfectly groomed gentleman. 
Beaujolais, launched in 2019 originally for the private line, will be available now in new flacons starting in late January 2020, or basically right now. The newest flacon is designed as a combination of several popular Tom Ford creations. The cylindrical shape is the same as in metallique or ombre leather, while the glass is frosted with the iconic ribbed elegancy of the Tom Ford signature line. The color of the liquid is light green. Beau de Jour presents the perfectly groomed gentleman who considers every detail. He exhibits the best version of himself to the world, but beneath the surface is something deeper, refreshing and sublime in all its layers. Fresh, commanding entrance of lavender from Provence introduces the clean and fervent facets of the Beau de Jour scent. The clean and fervent facets. It's almost a tongue twister. The cool and refreshing opening is further amplified with an infusion of an energetic hybrid of lavenders. The core beats with the herbal inflection of African rosemary and floral green geranium with its subtle mint nuance. A powerful contrast to the leather-like warmth of oak moss and the electric green of basil. Patchouli and amber create an earthy foundation of radiant wood and sensual musky warmth, further elevating Beaujolais's refreshing notion of masculinity through the finish. Beau de Jour is a fragrance that I greatly enjoy. It's got a barbershop kind of vibe. That's a classic fougere style of fragrance. It does have a good amount of depth to it, a good amount of warmth to it, and is a high quality fragrance through and through. Something that you can easily wear formally or to the office. You can pull it off casually as well. So I'm actually really glad that they did make this into a signature line fragrance though, where I already own it in the uh, private blend bottle. I don't foresee myself picking this one up, assuming it's the same fragrance, which it is. Next up, let's talk about Eccentric Molecules 05 from Eccentric Molecules, of course. That brand is most well known for Molecule 01, which is ISO E Super. That's how it is uh, sold. That's how it's marketed. In actuality, that's ISO Gamma Super, but we don't really need to go into that here. Essentially, Molecule 1234, each one of those, is one molecule or aroma chemical. So ISO E Super, Ambroxan, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have Eccentric 1234, which is a fragrance, so there's multiple notes there, but it's based around whatever the note is from molecule 1234. They match up. So molecule one, ISO E Super, Eccentric one is a fragrance based around that aroma chemical. With this one, Eccentric Molecules 05, it is Cashmirin. So Molecule 05 is just Cashmirin. And then Eccentric 05 is a fragrance built around Cashmirin. This is from Fragrantica. Cashmirin combines a cocooning, musky softness with dry, aromatic woodiness and a sweet and resinous pine note. So if you're unaware of Cashmirin, there you go. And this is a quick write-up about Eccentric 05. The top note of Eccentric 05 is very simple. Bergamot to keep things light and orange, an ingredient which has an emotional tone to it, bright and happy. It reflects the orange groves that cover this island. They're talking about being in the Mediterranean with this fragrance. Laurel and rosemary are typical Mediterranean plants with a spicy freshness. Juniper brings an herbal tonality, and cypress is a very dry, pungent wood. The dry down has two classic Mediterranean ingredients, Cystus labdanum and Mastic. Mastic is a resin produced by a small tree that grows especially near the sea. It has the clean, sharp scent of newly cut branches. Cystus is a small plant that grows everywhere in the Mediterranean. It has a sweet, leathery, balsamic quality which the perfumer loves. And of course, there is around 15% of cashmere, which gives the fragrance its piney warmth. They also introduced a subtle fig, both the bitterness of the leaves and the ripeness of the fruit. So that is a quick breakdown of how Eccentric 05 is supposed to come across. So there you have the newest combo in the Eccentric Molecules family, Molecule 05 and Eccentric 05 based around Cashmere. And last up, a fragrance that I have no write-up for. It's a cheapie, essentially. This is from Bath & Body Works. They have a new fragrance called Atlantic, and these go for $39.50. Atlantic is a refreshing blend of coastal citrus, sea mist, and clean woods. That's all the write-up I have on that one. It's a Bath & Body Works fragrance. It's centered around citrus, 
C notes and clean woods. So you probably have a good idea of how that one smells. I imagine very fresh, clean, inoffensive, but not too terribly unique. But if you go buy a Bath & Body Works store in your local mall or something like that, maybe stop in, give it a spray and see how it is. And that guys is going to wrap up this week in fragrance. A lot of new releases here. Let me know which ones you're most excited about in the comments below. I already let you guys know which one out of these I'm most excited for, and that one I'm gonna be trying to pick up as soon as possible. As always, guys, thank you so much for all of your support. I couldn't do this without you, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.